Hey, hi, and I'm very happy to be here uh, at this workshop and welcome to the presentation of grounding spatial temporal language with transformers. So uh, this is joint work with Tristan Karch, uh, Clément moulin Katia Hoffman from Microsoft and Pierre Boudic. So let's begin. So first, uh, we will introduce the work by saying that it is a part of grounded language learning and grounded language learning is a subfield of AI and it is about learning language in a way that is connected with the physical world. So um, traditionally, uh, natural language processing is concerned with uh, ling linguistic input only, but in uh, grounded language learning, it is important to try to connect this language with the physical world. So in recent years, one possible option to uh, consider this, uh, this field or to study grounded language learning has been language conditioned deep reinforcement learning, uh, where an agent uh, or a reinforcement learning agent is provided not, not only with the state of the world, but also with, for instance, um, a language instruction and has to perform what the inst instruction specifies and the reward it receives de depends on the instruction. So this is a special case of gold conditioned reinforcement learning, which has also received some interest in the recent year. So previous work in this field has shown the importance of not only learning a policy for the agent, so a function that learns to translate the states and the language into actions, but also of trying to uh, model the reward function so to learn to say if a given sentence is true or false in a given uh, of a given state of the of the world. So the settings. Um, so for instance, here you can see on the left uh, side one of the classical works in this uh, field, uh, which is called Baby AI. And you can see here the environment, which consists of a grid world with several objects scattered around with their colors and their shapes. And you can see here the agent, which is represented as a red arrow. So the agent is provided with this synthetic language instruction, which is put the, uh, the blue key next to the green ball and has to execute this instruction. So it has to behave not only based on its state and on its observations, but also on the language it receives. And these settings usually only consider instantaneous language and descriptions and the architectures, the deep learning architecture used in this agent reflect this. And in this work we are doing now, we want to be able to extend these settings uh, to consider sentences uh, with a, the, a temporal aspect, such as the animal that was next to the rock jumped. So here, the, um, the temporal aspects comes because jumping is an action that is performed over time. And to decide if something jumped, if an animal uh, jumped, you have to look at its evolution over time. And notice also that we refer to the animal, to a particular object with its spatial relationship to uh, another object in the past. And this relationship may no longer be true in the present. So uh, we cast this uh, ground, language grounding problem, in our case, not a, as a reinforcement learning problem, but as more narrowly as learning a reward function, R of theta, so as a deep neural network. And you can see this reward function also as a truth function that has to learn to tell if a sentence, a given sentence WL, is true or false given an observation S of I and T. Here, the WL, um, the L index indexes the different words of the sentence, and each observation is a, an object vector, which uh, contains information about the shapes, the sizes, etc., cetera, of, um, of objects in the environment. The I index here indexes the different um, objects that exist in the environment, and the T here indexes the different time steps. So we have access to the, the whole uh, traces uh, of the objects over time uh, as an input observation for our reward function. And then we evaluate the ability of our models to generalize to unseen sentences. Uh, this is a kind of systematic or li linguistic generalization. And to do this, we monitor the F1 score on sets of test sentences uh, on uh, our set of observations. So rapidly to describe our environment and the spatial temporal language we use uh, in our setting. So you can here see here a visual uh, 
depiction, let's say, of our, uh, of our setting, which uh, contains a collection of objects, which contains an, an agent, which is represented by its hand over here. And the agent can interact with the different objects by grasping them, moving them around, etc. cetera. The, the objects can also interact with each other. For instance, if an animal uh, passes over a source of food or supply, it will grow in size, and the plants also. Uh, we monitor the temporal evolution of the states of the objects over a whole episode. And at the end of an episode, uh, language descriptions of everything that happened during one episode is generated at the end. So the language we use is very, is very uh, synthetic and is generated according to a grammar that allows us to um, generate only true sentences for the, the uh, states uh, that we have the temporal traces of the states we have in our environment. So to describe the language, the syntactic language in a bit more detail, we have a set, a set of basic primitives for our language, which is composed of different objects. Uh, for example, a cat, but we have uh, 30 something uh, objects, 32 objects, and also some categories such as living thing, uh, furniture, etc. Uh, we have also some attributes for our objects, blue, green, red, which corresponds to their color. And we have also sets of predicates, which importantly um, allow us to uh, talk about the actions of the agents over the objects in the environment. So these are the basic language, and they do not uh, entail any uh, spatial or temporal con uh, concepts in the language. Then we have also the spatial aspect in our language. Um, so we have decided to restrict ourselves to um, referring to objects as their um, relations, specified by their relations in space to other objects. So we have one-to-one -one relations. Uh, we can refer to an object, to a thing, for example, uh, by the fact that, it's, that it is left of another thing. And similarly, we can refer to an object by its relationship in space to all the other objects, by instance saying that it is the leftmost object. And finally, and this is important, uh, the, the, tempora the temporal aspect in our language is represented by three things. So firstly, the temporal predicates that we consider, such as shaking and growing, can only be decided by looking at the temporal evolution of the objects over time. And the, um, the, the second aspect of the uh, temporality we consider in our language is putting a predicate to the past. So this is realized in the language by uh, adding the was token before the verb to indicate that the given action had been, has been taking place in the past. And we also use pa past spatial, spatial reference to indicate that a given spatial reference was true in the past and is no longer true in the present. So here, for instance, uh, there is an example that has past spatial reference because the chameleon here was bottom of the, the television. It moved on the top. And right now in the present, the agent is grasping it. So grasping in the present was bottom of television because the chameleon was bottom of television at first. So here there is another illustration illustrating uh, temporal predicates and also the past tense for this temporal predicates. So first, the agent grasps the TV and shakes it. Uh, so this happens over a time interval. And this is the temporal predicate aspect. After a few time steps, uh, the agent releases the TV, the TV and moves away. So the action of shaking is uh, considered in the past and is no longer true in the present. Hence, one of the descriptions that is generated at the end of the episode is was shake red television. To, from this set of episodes, we create some samples of observation sentence tuples, as of ITWL, um, and we process them with some architecture based on transformers, which have enjoyed really good performance in natural language and also other uh, tasks uh, in the recent years. Uh, we train them with supervised learning to predict if a given sentence is true or false with the given uh, temporal trace of objects that we consider. And we implement different inductive, inductive biases in these architectures to study the effects of different kinds of um, 
aggregation uh, on this task. So the first model I'm going to present shortly is um, the unstructured transformer, where all the different time steps for all the different objects in this dimension here are uh, simply flattened um, in, a single, uh, in a single list, in a single set of objects. The language description is concatenated, and a query, a learned query token, is also concatenated at the end. Several rounds of self-attention, as is classical with transformers, uh, is performed on this uh, set of objects, and a final uh, reward token is used to make the, the prediction at the end. So you can see this as a kind of reduction operation over this, this whole dimension, which has been flattened here. Then we also consider the spatial transformer, uh, which performs a kind of hierarchical attention. So it is um, a sequence of two different uh, transformers. The first one is applied over the different time steps here. So at each time step, the language is concatenated to the different objects here. And also the query token is repeated at each time step here. So this produces, after uh, the rounds of self-attention, this produces a final vector, which is of the same length as the number of time steps in our episode. And this is queried again, so reduced again with another transformer with different parameters to produce the final um, prediction token R here, which is used for predicting if the label is true or false. And finally, we uh, use also a tra uh, something we term a tra temporal transformer, which is the transposed architecture, as you can uh, guess from the, the picture here, where the words of the language are con concatenated to the different objects within the time dimension. This is first reduced along the time dimension with several rounds of self-attention, so the objects have the opportunity to attend to their temporal evolution. This produces a vector which has the same length as the number of objects. Then this is queried and reduced again to produce the final um, the reward uh, token R, which is used for prediction. So we also measure the influence of letting the words interact directly with uh, the observations or aggregating them as we do for the spatial temporal uh, dimensions for the, our uh, different uh, architectures before. Uh, so this is to study the effect of letting the word tokens interact directly with the objects versus summarizing them in a, in a single token that uh, incorporates the whole language uh, information here. So we divide our test sets, which are composed of new unseen sentences, according to the kinds of meanings that they consider. Uh, so first we have the base sentences, which have no spatial or temporal um, meanings or concepts in them. The spatial ones, which include the spatial relations. Uh, the temporal ones, which include uh, the past, the uh, past predicates, and also uh, time interval or temporal predicates, such as shape and grow. And the spatial temporal ones, which is spatial and temporal. And so this is still ongoing work, but we have some preliminary results here, which I'll go over uh, kind of uh, quickly. We can see simply that the unstructured and the temporal transformers are the best uh, within a small margin of error. So this is only three random seeds for each of our architecture. Here is the F1 score over the, the whole, uh, our four splits. And they uh, perform, uh, they have very good performance and similar performance on these three splits. So we can see that on the spatial temporal um, splits, the word aggregation, which are those two models here, seem to perform a bit less. And very interestingly, the spatial transformers, which, is the, which are the first two ones here, perform very badly and close to baseline here uh, on, this, uh, on this task. So this is quite interesting. So to conclude, we have presented the first step towards grounded language learning of spatial temporal concepts. We have presented a family of transformer architecture on this task to study the effect of different inductive biases on grounding our spatial temporal concepts. And we have identified that aggregating along the time dimension uh, seems to have no uh, measurable impacts uh, compared to having uh, an unstructured transformer. But the spatial transformer performs quite quite badly. And this is suggesting that 
um, there is an importance of maintaining object identity in this task to be able to ground the language correctly. So thanks for listening and 